Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE lesson. Now, lots of you tend to be a little bit confused with AO2. What does it mean? And how can you even find good AO2 points to include in both your language and literature exams? Now, remember that AO2 Assessment Objective 2 relates to relevant use of subject terminology. Just a very fancy way of saying when the examiner is looking at your response, right? So when you're making your point, then you're adding your evidence and then identifying whether the writer has used a language or a structure technique. You need to be able to identify some really good language and structure techniques. So what I wanted to do within this very brief lesson is to show you guys the top 10 language techniques and the top 10 structure techniques you will find in any unseen extract and indeed to be honest even you can use these techniques for literature okay so this is the text that you're going to be writing about for your literature paper one and paper two exams but of course also these literature techniques are relevant for your language paper one and paper two exams so in terms of being very very clear on language and structure remember when it comes to AO2 this is you showing off your awareness of subject terminology in other words are you able when you're quoting to pick out and to identify interesting language techniques that the writer has used right when you look at the building blocks of the language are you able to identify what techniques is the author using but equally you need to be able to make sure that you identify some interesting structural techniques now let's begin by looking at the top 10 language techniques you'll find in any extract if you get stuck just remember these techniques and look for them as you're reading any literature extract but even any language extract okay so starting off with alliteration this is when two or more words start with the same letter this is different to a simile again yet another very very popular language technique that writers like to use this is where they're comparing two things using like or as and this again is a really powerful language technique the third technique that you'll find in any text is the writer's use of a metaphor this is when they're describing something as if it were something else the fourth technique is the use of pathetic fallacy the weather is being mentioned in some way the sunshine the rain and usually it reflects the atmosphere or the mood the fifth language technique that you find in any text is oxymoron writers like to use oxymoron which is a very specific type of juxtaposition this is when two opposite things are shown hot and cold up and down and so on the sixth language technique you can find in any text is anything to do with semantic field remember semantic field simply means category okay so in other words um two or more words that belong to the same category roses daffodils um, and tulips for example belong to the category the semantic field of flowers uh iphone laptop uh, mobile phone belongs to the semantic field or the category of technology again very very popular language technique that writers like to use the next seven technique is onomatopoeia this is just basically sound words like boom uh, fizzle crash woof and so on the eighth language technique you will find in any text is hyperbole which means over exaggeration the ninth technique is personification when objects are given human-like qualities the uh, tenth technique now this i've subdivided it into really specific forms of imagery okay so writers like to use imagery when it comes to painting a vivid image in the reader's minds and more specifically you can sound even more fancy and impress your examiners by talking about the writer's use of auditory imagery right so for example if they use on onomatopoeia this is auditory image because it's related to what you can hear they also use olfactory imagery, which is to do with smells, okay? So this is like a pungent smell, a sharp smell, a citrusy smell. That's what we call olfactory imagery. And also writers love to use tactile imagery, okay? For example, smooth or rough surfaces. This relates to what we can feel when we touch something. Obviously, all of this is painting an image in the reader's mind. If you forget everything else, remember those 10 language techniques. Now let's talk about structure. In terms of structure, the first structural techniques that writers love to use is the use of tense and sometimes they'll even shift between the three so present past and future if there's a shift that's also a structural technique it's very very powerful that's the first structural technique you'll find in any text the second is to do with repetition okay so just a repetition of the same phrase over and over again or the same word over and over again the third structural technique is to do with anaphora this is when one subject is used and it's constantly repeated and referred back to within the text this is called anaphora Fora. this is a really powerful structural technique and it's a grade nine technique the fourth technique is of course listing and you can even be more fancy by talking about 
ascendant, ascendantic listing. This is where there's listing without any and, but because, okay, it's just listing with commas or the opposite, which is syndentic listing, where they use lots of ands and buts, okay? So I bought apples and pears and uh, bananas and this and that. We call that syndentic listing as opposed to the opposite, which is a syndentic listing. The fifth structure technique that writers use is rhetorical question, very, very popular, a question that's not meant to be answered. The sixth, which is very closely related, is hyperphora. Sometimes a writer will pose a rhetorical question and immediately answer it. We call that hyperphora, when a question is asked and then immediately answered. Really powerful structural technique. The seventh, and this is a personal favorite, okay, is declarative sentences. Declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact, feeling, or mood. Right now, I'm just speaking in a series of declarative sentences. If you're ever stuck with structure, just default to the writer's use of a declarative sentence. You'll never go wrong with that. The eighth technique uh, that lots of writers use, not all, but lots of writers use, is circular structure, when it starts and ends in a similar way. The ninth technique is the one word sentences. We call this a minor sentence, okay? So when you have a long sentence, it slows down the pace of the text. And then when you have a short sentence, it speeds it up. It creates a kind of jarring effect, right? So you're kind of reading and gliding along the page, reading, reading, and then suddenly, boom, there's just one word minor sentence. And what that does is it kind of creates a shock factor, okay? And the final technique that writers love to use, structure, is ellipsis, the three dots, okay? This is really interesting punctuation that writers like to use in their writing. So guys, when it comes to AO2 and especially using subject terminology, being able to identify the use of language techniques by an author in any text, as well as the use of structural techniques, memorize these 10 language and structure techniques and you will be absolutely fine for any text, be it for language or literature. Thank you so much for listening.